favorite digital show with just a text. Support Larry Reed Live by texting GIVE to 404-800-4530. Text G-I-V-E to 404-800-4530 today. Wait a minute, you can't do it. I done put the wrong date everywhere. 10, 18, can I just say that there? It's fixed on YouTube, but it ain't fixed on what's the name? So what? Oh, welcome, welcome to Larry Live. It is August the 18th, the 8th, 2018, according to your screens. But let me tell you what happened. I I done 159 things today and I just got myself together. So I'm so sorry. That stuff ain't exactly right. It's saying it's August the 8th, 2018, but you know it's October the 8th, 2018. I'm so sorry. And so let me go ahead and fix that on YouTube while I can, but I don't think I can fix it on Facebook, and I know I can't fix it on Periscope. No, I can't. I just tried to do it. won't let me do it. I, I just tried to edit it. It usually let me edit stuff while I'm live, but it won't let me do it today. Okay, this is what we're going to do on tonight's show. On tonight's show, we're going to do it just a little bit different. First of all, if you are watching me, that means you, you need to um, participate in letting the word get out. So go ahead and retweet if you are on Twitter and Periscope. Share right now if you are on Facebook Live and share to all of your social media if you're on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, make sure you go and subdue and scribe over there on YouTube. Why? Because I can't see when you do it. You get notified. You hit that bell. You get notified whenever I post a new video. When Whenever I'll go go live, and want nobody to know but you and you. 
Okay, so go ahead and do that right now. This is what we're going to do tonight. Tonight, once I start going through all of the stories, we're going to put the number up. I'm going to try to do this show in one hour because I'm already late. I want to keep y'all up waiting. I'm going to try to do it in one hour so y'all can call in as you're interested in whatever topic I am covering versus waiting all to the end of the show. You think that's the best thing to do? Why is you yawning for? You tired of what? Doing nothing? You had a very long weekend? Do you know I've done all the stuff you've done this weekend times 10? And you yawning? I need for you not to yawn. And if you're not, then I'll go get some strength from somewhere because that's just not, we're just not entertaining that because you ain't did nothing, not much as i done. And compared to what i done, you ain't did nothing. All right, so this is what we're going to be discussing tonight. We're going to start off at the top in pop culture and entertainment. Then we're going to work our way down to the, the stuff that some of y'all are probably looking at the show to, 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 um, to find out about what I got to say about some of the stuff that has happened this whole weekend. So I am ready to get started up. First, we're going to talk about Brett Kavanaugh. Now, let me explain to y'all who this is. For those of you who do not know, this man, this young man right here, he was brought up on some allegations. Now, I said in the show a whole, a whole lot of you had a problem with it because we just heard a credible testimony from Sister Woods. I think it was Christine Woods, and what her name was. She gave a little credible testimony talking about how she was touched in her pum pum area in her soft milk part in the 1983. I don't know how her pum pum, her punanti remembers what happened in 1983. It been 2008 because I don't remember what happened in 1983. But she, for some reason, she can remember detail, detail, detail. It just reminds me of the Bryant woman and the Emmett Till case who gave up their, uh, gave a credible testimony with all them tears and all that crying. And then they drug lynched and hung Emmett Till. If you ask me, I don't a bit more believe what she said went on. Now, I know you guys do not like that I don't agree with you, but that's the whole point of Larry Live. We don't have to agree. I think, in my opinion, that Kavanaugh is a liar, that he is a part of the white boy goody team thing, and I'm pretty sure that he has done what she described was done to her. I'm pretty sure that he has probably done somebody like that. I don't think it was Christine Woods. I think her and I think the mother, three or four people, you know, there were three or four that said they believed, three or four said the same thing happened. The next thing said they did not happen. And then, you know, he was caught in some lies on the stand, you know, it's just a whole mess. Anyway, point is, he's now a part of the whole Supreme thing that y'all was trying to keep him out of with this. The FBI ain't had like four or five days that, to find out what and where it went on. So when he went and got sworn in, guess who swears him in? Our press butana, he stands there, he speaks, he apologized for all of the people giving him all this flack about what ain't even proved that he done. But you know, I feel like with this whole Me Too, Too movement, I, that's, that's the part we got to be careful about, you know, because this, there ain't no due process nobody paying attention to and the evidence is like optional. It's just whatever somebody say with a whole bunch of tears. Anyway, so. He went to that press retainer, president businessman, president businessman, the entertainer. He said, No, we sorry. Da 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 da. He sworn in, I think he was, and that's it. So, how y'all feel about that? Put the number up. How you feel about this whole Kavanaugh case? Now, you already know how I feel about it. Usually, I wait to tell y'all how I feel about it near the end of something, but the, the matter, fact of the matter is, I already talked about this on last Monday's show. But from that Monday to this one, he's already up in there now this is what's interesting everybody who's going to be working around him every last one of them are women now this is what i think one side of me feel like he done been stopped up because what's going to happen if he ran into all them women and he got this kind of spirit and his soul ain't right with god then he gonna go in there and mess it around and this time it's going to be recorded. It's going to be omorosed. It's going to be recorded. It's going to be on a, a video or something. And they're going to come out piece by piece by piece. Word to the rise, Kavanaugh. You better go in there and keep your eyes looking to the hills from which cometh your help. <laughs> because if you don't, 
You're going to be in a full mess because them women already just waiting for you to look at them wrong. Don't shake hands. Don't give a hug. Don't then say good morning. Say hey. I mean, you take that any kind of way. You just, you just take it for somebody in the South. Say hey. You can take that any kind of way. Hey. 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 You can't take that sister off, but you don't shake hands and you do not hug any of them women that's going to be there in your job because they have surrounded you to try to catch you and see if you still got that same um, spirit. You know, what is it? That's what I said. Wait a minute. Kendall. I know what I'm talking about. Didn't we read that before we started this show? I, 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 I know that. So why is you reading me what Alonzo said? Because I, I, I guess you breaking my concentration. I heard you wrong. Yeah, you heard me wrong, like you always do. You do, cause you don't be knowing what be coming next. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alonzo, for giving me the information that I already said. That Kendall decided to read, cause he feel like you know more than I do. I guess that's what it is. It well, what is it then? Shut up. Thank you. All right. Next topic. Let's go on to the next. <laughs> Let's go on to the next topic. Can we go to the next topic? Okay. Since you want to play producer of the Darren show and don't do nothing but click buttons. All right. Oh, let me tell y'all. Well, let me tell y'all. I went to the picture show. The new picture show that came out this week, da 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 da. The name of the picture picture show is Venom, and I went with a few friends, and we had a great. I went a whole bunch of uh, new acquaintances and and uh, friends and people. We all went out there, we had a great time. It was so good. Went to a nice bougie movie theater where they got the chair that wrapped around you, got the tray that come out in front of it. It's real nice. You got two holes for your little drink and your other little drink, and you got the thing for it. It's just real bougie. It cost a whole lot of money. Um, and we went there and it was real fun. It was laid back and it had desserts and all gourmet style food and everything. It was real good. Venom. Now, let me tell you this. This is a Marvel movie. And you know I love Marvel movies. But Tom, in my opinion, Marvel did not live up to Marvel. Marvel is usually marvelous. But this movie was not marvelous to Larry Reed. Now, I enjoyed it because I like the, the, the effects and all that kind of going on. But they want enough of them. Marvel give you a whole lot of swoosh, boom, bam. But it didn't give me that this time. So I wonder what is going on. I don't care that it's an introduction to his character. You you, you got to make my coins count. And to me, it was, I mean, there's a few of the people that with me, they really liked and enjoyed it, but this was not enough. The Marvel, you want Marvelous, not on this one. You didn't get this one right. It just won't. It was too much of a story and telling too much about the character's life. Well, let me say this. You go watch it and you let me know what you think. I watched it. I say, save your money. Wait till they get to your Amazon, your bootleg Amazon box where you can look at it or wait till they get on the cables. But, you know, the other show, I, I think one of the last show that I told you all the different movies you need to watch was it last Monday night? I think it was. Let's look at how they're done in the box office now. All right, Venom. Now, look over there to that column where it says budget. So, you see that they only spent, see there? A Marvel movie used to be well over a hundred million dollar budget. See, I won't wrong. Anyway, the first weekend they have brought in eighty million dollars. Now that's ten million dollars shy of beginning to make a profit. Please understand that everybody you saw in the movie already been paid. So this is what um they of course they're gonna at least they're gonna break even and they're probably gonna do really well um comparatively relatively but it not it's not going to be one of marvel's highest movies if you ask me that's what i think now i didn't go see a star is born but this movie it, they're already done busted what they made they ain't spent but 36 million dollars so i wonder how much money did lady gaga get for playing that role now i heard that they expect this is already up for a hold on for a minute what's that award about to come out is the Emmys? It's already up for one. 
And they say this, that it's going to win over Black Panther, although Black Panther has, has uh, made more money. They say that this movie is going to be over Black Panther because it's long away than highly anticipated. If it does, I'm going to scream Conspiracy during C. Smallfoot, don't know who that is, but I told y'all about Night School. I like Night School. They didn't spend but $29 million. They already done made $46 million. I told y'all this is what it was going to do. It's already in nine new theaters. You see, but at plus nine, very good movie. I like that. The House with Clock in the Walls. Anybody like supernatural movies? I like that. I watched that. I told y'all that the other day. It's $42 million to make. It's already $55 million. It's going to be well. It's going to do fine. All of them actors are going to have a job again. A simple favor. I don't know what that is. I told you about the nun. Oh, that was good. $22 million. Woo, look at that. It's already made $113 million. So who, what, what um studio had that? Can you check and see? Oh, Warner Brothers. Boy, they needed that, too. They really needed that. And they're doing good with Stars Born because they got that, too. All right. Anyway, Crazy Rich Asians. Great movie. I loved it. It's made $169 million. And they only spent $30 million. That was easy because most of them was breakout actors. So they they was uh, they cut that, that money real good. And I ain't seen Hellfest. All right. On to the next. All right. Let's go away from the movies. I'm done with the movies. All right, next story that I want to talk to you guys about is Juanita's Bynum. Juanita! For those of you that do not know, let me tell you. First of all, I don't think you cannot know who Juanita Bynum is, even if you're not in the church. Because what y'all do not know, Juanita Bynum is the absolute bomb when it comes to making a mark in black Pentecostalism. It's, the reality is, she was the female Jakes. Plain and simple. I guess she didn't feel like she would call the pastor, but she had, in that prime, she would have been all right because she started passing the pastor beside Weeks, but then Weeks stomped her in the center of her wheel right here at the Ritz Carton, around the corner from my house, stomped her, beat her, and then she became a voice for domestic violence, and it really just, she went through a whole lot of change. She's had the the peril. You supposed to have the number at the bottom so people can call and they want to. Um, she's had the peril of having to mature and grow in her person and in her life before the whole world. And if you followed her ministry, I was introduced to her... No more sheets have been out a, a long time, but I've seen it for the first time like i never seen it before. That's really the, the, the sermon that put her over the top. Jake's platformed her. Her life went in a tipsy-turvy. She went married this man. That ain't go right. He stomped in the middle of her wheel. You know, her and Jake's had a falling out. Then Jake's brought her back. Then after Jake's brought her back, then something else happened. Her life went out, of, out all crazy. She went through this. She went through that. She went through this. She went through that. And she was on every TV station. She was traveling everywhere. Let me tell you, this girl filled the Georgia Dome, had to turn people away, and 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 raise hundreds of millions of dollars. Are you hearing what I'm saying? She did it. Black female. Ain't been done since. Period. She's the GOAT. I don't I know what y'all probably saying in the comments, but she the GOAT. It, let me see what y'all say in the comments. Uh, somebody said no more sheets was the business. Yes, what everybody's saying. Everybody's saying, you know it's the truth. Yeah, Juanita's. Yeah. What what they saying over there? On, um, can you see? I can't. I ain't got to the um Facebook yet. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she the go. So let me tell you what happened. I. <laughs> Once again, T.D. Jakes has came to the rescue. You may not know, but Woman Thou Art Loose is coming up in a week or two. And guess who, and I ain't going to say came to the rescue, but Jakes is a forgiven person. And Jakes is the one that platformed Juanita. So Jakes had in, has insight into Juanita like nobody else has insight. And something in him recognizes something in her and no matter what she go through i mean because she's bumped the head quite a few times you know she came out saying she slept with men and women you know she um, she there ain't nothing that she can't do i mean she, then that time she was blowing that horn and then another time she had on how many blunders 
I mean, she has went vowels. I mean, every negative thing that could happen, she has endured it. I mean, then the boy was spent the millions of dollars, the man, hundred thousand dollars. Boy was scamming her out of, and she was on our show one time, and then she called, she called me um, after a show. It was just a whole lot of different stuff. So she been through it. Really, haven't been on Christian TV as a host doing her own thing in a long time. But let me tell you what happened. In the same year, I started this digital show. Let me read live. About a month or two later, she started in July of 2016. And you know, those of you who know the history of that whole show, you saw the whole going on between us. I had, it was more than me at the time. Uh, my show and her show at me, with me at three. And the bumblebees and all them watching it, all that kind of going on. Well, on top of what has happened with the Jake's thing. So that's like, she coming back. Now, Impact Network has given her own show. Watch her reaction today, live on her live, on Facebook Live, that was watching the Impact Network. You know, because sometimes you set this stuff up, it may not come on, and it may c come on, it may, I know the first time I was on a Word Network, um, we done bought our package, we were supposed to be there for, you know, three or four months, and then the first show when we advertise it, for some reason or another, somebody ain't programmed the thing right. And we came on a whole week or two later. So she was like, oh, I don't know if it's going to come on. Oh, I hope it come on. Because everybody was watching live, thousands of people. And this is her reaction. Watch. There it is. It is. It is. Ah! Oh, my God. Ah! It's there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. happy for you but that was the ugliest crap I have ever seen <laughs> why did it we're celebrating with you now I, I can't wait because this is gonna be my testimony because I started a month before she did but she at three mine was Larry live at five I started about a month and a half before she did and what I want to do is get a facility build it out for my own studio and stream it on live. Because you said you saw her watching on, she built that. And she began to do services and some lives from that studio. Now, from that studio, a network has picked it up and she'll be not just live online, but in millions of homes across the world. I think that is great. Let me see if you have before I give some hand claps. Don't I'll just I'll not look. If you're, happy, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Let me see your hand claps. Let me see your hand claps. Let me see your hand claps. Was y'all happy, boy? Y'all happy? What's, what's, that was the ugliest cry in the world. 
Oh, but we happy for you, Juanita. Look, y'all need to tag her on in on Facebook. Dr. Juanita Bottom said, Larry LRL celebrates your new show. And then give us some loveliness. Give us some loveliness and some happies. We are happy for you. And I'm gonna celebrate you because we started about the same time. And I am currently looking at facilities right now. And so I'm believing the same thing about to happen for me. So when we do Larry Live on Mondays, woo, it'll be in a state-of-the-art facility. And you can see my audience and every darn thing. And wouldn't it be good? Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait till it happens. I just cannot wait till it happens. All right. What will y'all say? Okay, a lot of hand claps. Y'all giving a whole lot. Y'all lighting it up. A whole lot of hand claps. <laughs> ah, y'all tickle at my, my, uh, my, uh, acting like one even. All right. Let's go to the next thing. Cheering, 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 cheering. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this here is a citadern ration. I'm going to tell y'all about this here. This happened over the weekend as well. All this I'm telling y'all happened over the weekend. Now, this here is, is, a, is a serious situation. This here is Bishop Michael Turpin. Now, let me tell you who his spiritual father is. Roar Brown, the deceased. Roar Brown, whose wife got kicked out by Deborah Crow and Pilgrim Church. But I don't think she had the house yet, but, you know, she still, it ain't hers. You know, she got to go at some point in time. Actually, she really ain't got to because it's not like a house that isn't owned by a church. It's a parsonage, so she might can just sit there and squat longer. She won't do. And if she can't, before I leave, I will squat in the middle of the floor, if you know what I mean, and leave them a nice present. I sure would. Anyway, and so... <laughs> Anyway, let me tell you what happened. Folk kept sending me, I mean, these lives were like 50, 159 hours long, all week long. This man went live, live after live after live. His wife and him, allegedly, I'll oh, put allegedly down there because I'm about to do all this allegedly. Allegedly, his wife and him put him in the crazy house because he was crazy. Now, I did not know the ins and outs, but somebody sent me a video. And when they sent me a video, it took me every bit, bit of 15 seconds to see. I don't know who this is, but they are crazy. And everybody's saying, you know, he's not crazy. He's just hurt. He's not crazy. He just hurt. I said, he might be hurt. But first and foremost, he is absolutely crazy. And that's just how it is. So. This is sort of calming down now because he made this post, and I'm going to show you one minute of it. He made this video sort of, well, I can't say that it's over because there's some other post that he made, but you just watch this video of him, you know, after he comes out of the facility they had put him, after he had been live for a long time, you know, and everything's calming down. He's sort of trying to explain this crazy way. You watch this now. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end it with this, you know. And I appreciate all you guys for praying for me and for reaching out. And I thank you. But you know what? It's a little bit too late. We don't respect anymore the sacred or the spiritual. And we run each other down. How, how, how was I supposed to go to one of my brothers to talk with them about this situation in which I'm dealing with this private pain when we're so competitive with each, with each other? And who has the largest church or who has the largest following and, and, and who preaches the best sermons. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to me because as, instead of us feeling so connected to our, whatever you want to call it, we don't walk in concern or love for each other. All right. So I'm going to say this. Number one, he is crazy. Number two, I want to support him in his healing, the healing of his mind and the healing of his heart. So 
some of y'all may be switched. Oh, I support him. I love him. You know, number two, he crazy. No, number one, he is crazy. You got, you got to expose that thing for what it is. He is absolutely crazy. He's not doing well. Crazy may not be the, the best term to use. I wouldn't use that if I was dealing with him, you know, in a different light. But this is my show and it's entertainment. And I just feel like saying crazy is crazy. And he needs some clinical help. And they tried to get him some, but he got up out of there and got up in time enough to, do, to come to church. Got live on on this thing and started demoting people because people didn't come get him out the crazy house and tell them folk that they needed first of all some telling some folk that they need to come to church make sure you come to church he's up there with a black mask you know doing his skin and then he makes references to something about spiders is coming out of his nose and they're the same spiders that is in his wife because his wife is supposedly cheating with stanley brown and michael young stanley brown a great producer out of the new york era area stanley brown and then also is talking about that uh that his wife was cheating on him you know so this is what i think because he was already nervous and had a few bad nerves and a few bad sparks already going on in his head something done transpired recently that sent him over the top and it very well could be what he alleges come on allegedly what he alleges, which is that his wife is having an affair on him with his very close adjutant. And because this affair is going on allegedly, I believe that it is the event or something, the equivalent that has sent him over the edge. Has a very pretty wife. Very pretty, she's very pretty, she's very pretty dark skinned lady, brown skin, huh? good teeth, good teeth. Yet, well, on this picture, both of them got nice looking teeth, but on that live video, it don't look like it. So I don't know if his teeth used to be like that, but then he went through some changes or some drugs, you know, cause that, um, some of them drugs, it take your teeth like that, um, what's that one? Uh, meth, tear your whole mouth out the frame, tear your grill to pieces. And maybe that's what happened, I don't know. But anyway, I don't have the complete whole story because I was not gonna take 159 hours out of my life and watch all the lives. So what I'm telling you is the clip notes version. But possibly some of you that are calling in right now actually have more to the story than I do. So before I go forward in this story and then get to Joshua Holmes' viral clips, I'm going to start taking some of the callers. You have to switch the pictures according to what they're calling in about. All right. So let's start with this first caller we have up here. Caller. Caller ending in 5244. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Got one minute. What topic are you talking on? Hello? Caller. Caller ending in 5244. Should have been listening to the show over the phone. Five, four. Three, two, one, good darn bad. All right. Caller ending in 3694. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Reginald calling from Jacksonville. What up, Reginald? How are you, sir? I just wanted to say right quick, uh, my heart was breaking for this preacher. He obviously was in a manic uh, episode. And I've been through a very painful divorce. They like to kill me. Yeah. It was over 15, 20 years ago, but I don't think the church and the people of God are giving people the love they need, even the guy Andrew Caldwell. We laughed and joked and had a lot of fun at his expense, but he hasn't gotten too much love and support from the church population. Mm. And uh, that's my minute. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I, and he said that in this clip that he played that he felt like people weren't there and all that kind of going on, you know, and, and, I, and that's- You know how they'll do you, brother? You know how they'll do you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When I went through my divorce in 2017, I went through depression. Um, I didn't get online and share that and go through all of my emotions out there, you know, but that was just my choice, you know, but I can understand what he's going through. But he has, this is more than just a, um, a meltdown um, or a break. There are some things with his logic. I listened to a little bit of the clip and, and, and his reality okay, well, has shifted. The spiritual people that want to come in and undergird him and rescue him instead of poking fingers at him and ridiculing him like some people have done online okay. and making sport of his life, of okay. his hurt. 
We all got to get through life, brother Larry. Okay. I, I hear that. I hear that, man. That's where I look at it, brother. I hear you. And if I go through a crisis, I don't want some people showing up at my door. Y'all stay home. <laughs> don't come to my house. I mean that, dude. <laughs> I hear you. I know what you mean. Some folk are heartless and uh, Why are you cold. you feeling like that? And you supposed to be anointed. And you yeah. got all these titles and degrees on the wall. Man, I'm a human being at the end of the day. True. True. I'm done, man. I'm over it. Thank you so much, man. Peace. Okay, Reggie ain't playing with that thing. Some of, he don't want y'all coming to his house if he going through some things because y'all too mean. That's what he said. You know, so I I get that and I understand that. I, I get it and I understand it because I guess if you are a preacher, if you are a pastor, you are a bishop, I guess folks feel like you ain't supposed to have no feelings and you can't have no trauma or no mishaps to happen within you and in your life. Mm. It's amazing to me that people still think like that. Now, to me, I... I felt like a majority of us was past that, but by the last few shows that I've done, I see that a lot of people are still taken back when somebody messes up that has a title or that is a preacher or that is in some kind of position of leadership. Mm, They are humans and they are people. But all of that is alleged. I don't know if the wife will cheat or what, but I do know that he done slipped. And I did see a post before I got live where he said that he had a meltdown, a meltdown before the whole world, before all of social media. So you guys, let's see how this turns out. Um, uh, you guys, please help me to stay informed. I can't do his long lives. Just text me the cliff note version because I'm not sitting there watching nobody for no five, six, seven hours. They'll let you know right then that he ain't had nobody to talk. To. Now that is something to talk about. You ain't got nobody to talk to? What what where's your close people? Your armor bear. Your I'm not saying you got to choose the right kind of armor bear. You got to choose somebody to be around you that can that can feel you and know you as a man. Well, it is said in this Christian walk as a pastor, you have no friends. So. Oh, that's a lie. I heard somebody say that the other day talking about when you're a pastor, you don't have no friends. That's this depends. I don't believe that. All right, all right. Let's go ahead to the next story. Oh, maybe we play the um the commercial for um for the Murray Summit, and then we'll talk about Joshua Holmes. That is our last topic. We're gonna go through all of his his three main viral videos that have made him an online sensation, and we're gonna talk about it and open up the lines, and we'll have the discussion concerning him. Let's go. Both of your favorite digital show with just a text. Support Larry Reed Live by texting GIVE to 404-800-4530. Text G-I-V-E to 404-800-4530 today. The Merge Summit. The Merge Summit is back. October 11th through 13th at the Universal Hilton in Universal City. Celebrating 10 years of excellence. This year's Merge Summit experience. Presented by AIDS Healthcare Foundation and Walgreens. Promise to deliver power-packed masterclasses, networking opportunities, and career-defining moments. All led by some of the entertainment's most successful artists, actors, creators, entertainers, and executives in TV, film, digital media, music, and more. If you are an aspiring writer, artist, actor, director, or producer, and you have a heart for the entertainment business, the Merge Summit 2018 is for you. October 11th through 13th, special discounted early bird registration available now for a limited time only at MergeSummit.com. That's MergeSummit.com. The Merge Summit to the 10th hour. 10 years and growing. Don't miss it. The Merge Summit is a production of Relevate Entertainment. Proudly presented by AHF and Walgreens. You ain't got but one darn job. (sighs) Why are you trying my patience so bad? 
like I was saying, if uh, if you stay over there in the California area, going over there to the Murray Summit is worth the registration. It's worth the trip and the flight over there. If you're not from California, take a hand part over there and make sure when you register, you let Dr. Holly Carter know that Dr. Larry D. Reed told you that you need to go. You Oh, just tell her that you heard it on the Larry Live. Put in the registration, tell somebody, let them know that that's where you heard it. And that's the reason why you over there buying the ticket and going to the thing. All right. So let's go forward a little bit. I can't believe this. It keep. I have to go. Uh, first of all, it ain't no production crew because I'm the production crew. If the, I don't want y'all saying this. I wish y'all can see all this stuff in here. This stuff on it, Larry Reed. I do it. The only thing that you got to do is click the button to go on to the next thing of what I done already did and before the show went over. You know what? I looked at a show in March. And do you know I was telling him just like this what to do? This is Art Dern Tober. So you need to come in here, turn this stuff on, and practice. This This should not be a part of the show all the darn time. Can it just be an honest mistake? It's not no honest mistake. It ain't nothing but clicking a button. I have to transfer the video over, run the video over, and I just... But that's it. You didn't put the... You didn't, you, first of all, you did not edit the video in one, on, one, on the Mac, in the Mac software, shoot it up to the cloud, pull it out of the cloud, and put it into the, the, the PC, and then put it into this software. I do all that. Through the production system. Dude, ain't doing no production. You're clicking the button. That's what I'm saying. I just forgot to click the volume. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. I just can't. Uh, I, I, can, I just can't can no more. Anyway, <clears throat> now, let's talk about this man here. Once upon a time, bring him over. Once upon a time, I was on my um, Facebooking. What? I don't need no commentary. Don't you try to become a co-host. Just leave it alone. This is all about me. I'm not sharing this platform with nobody for the rest of my life. Oh, you don't need the platform? Okay, good. That means I'm not giving you no check. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh. Okay, now, let me tell you this. Look look at him. Look at Joshua. Look at him. He's an interesting looking person. He's very interesting looking. So I once upon a time I was on my Facebook. And I'm just going through my Facebookers. And then I seen this man here. He was sitting. I said, this this is a whole black man with white folk eyes. So I said, let me look here and see this. Why are you doing with the blue content? And I'm looking, looking. And. Okay, hold on. Maybe I should show y'all the videos first that went viral. And then I'm going to tell you what I think about Joshua Holmes. Prophet Joshua Holmes. And then I'm gonna open up the lines for you to tell me what you think. This is the first video that went viral of him. Now, mind you, he's sitting in a makeshift studio and he's talking and preaching and ministering to people. But one day he's talking, ministering to people. Something happens. This is what happened. Mother, your mother outside, Jesus said, my, my plan is to do the will of the Father. That's my mother and my father. That, saints, do y'all hear that? Listen. Listen, saints. This is, this is my office. Listen. Do, do you hear? Do you hear? Listen. 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 That was hilarious. And then behind there went this whole back and forth on Twitter rations because she was a prophetess. I can't remember her name, but he done got rid of her. He don't have her no more and got somebody to look better, even better than she did. And so they together now. So some time go along and almost every video he does goes viral. Viral is 10,000 views within the first 24 hours. And almost every video he does, it goes viral. He gets up there dressed very eccentrically, very nicely. Um, I guess that's relative though. Um, a whole bunch of goals and bam, bam, boom, bam, bam. And, and it just happened to be that he... So it seems as though to the women that he's very attractive. Now, y'all women tell me in here what y'all think. 
Because every time I go up on his video, that's what I see. Ooh, problem. And this is what I heard. Somebody told me that now the followers are actually changing their last name to his on Facebook. The women, whatever their first name is, now they're changing it to Holmes on Facebook. I seen about four of them. That's interesting. And I want to know. I, I would like to talk to him to find out. I, I just I want to under first of all, I want to ask him what happened that day. When we just seen with his wife absolutely flipped. I want to know about that. And then I want to talk to him about this video. This was the next video that I saw that went viral that all the bloggers and vloggers were talking about. Watch this. This is a minute long. Listen to what he says. From you until you get this Holy Ghost inside of you until you love the Holy Spirit like me. Ah! See, when you get into discipleship, your focus change. You're not looking at a man dick. You're not looking at no pussy from woman. You're looking at what the hell spirit you got on the inside of you. If you got a demon on side of you, I don't want to be inside of you. I, if, if you got an evil spirit, I don't want no transference of demons inside of me. I don't want you sticking your dick in me. I don't want you uh, giving me no pussy. Because I don't want no transfer of what you carry in. See, this is the discipleship of a prophet. And some of y'all ain't ready. If you if you up there scringing me because I'm talking about pussy and dick, there's nothing wrong with you. You got it on you. I hope you ain't got both of them. I hope you got one. <laughs> now watch this here. God created that, so what, what's the problem? Some of y'all done had sex before. Now, now, uh... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this video one more again because I want y'all to be clear on what he said. I want you to know exactly what he said. I want you to watch it, and I want you to listen to it one more time before we discuss it. Here we go again. From you until you get this Holy Ghost inside of you, until you love the Holy Spirit like me. Ah! See, when you get into discipleship, your focus change. You're not looking at a man dick. You're not looking at no pussy from a woman. You're looking at what the hell spirit you got on the inside of you. If you got a demon on side of you, I don't want to be inside of you. I, if, if you got an evil spirit, I don't want no transference of demons inside of me. I don't want you sticking your dick in me. I don't want you uh, give me no pussy because I don't want no transfer of what you carry. See, this is the discipleship of a prophet. <laughs> And some of y'all ain't ready. If you if you up there scringing me because I'm talking about pussy and dick, there's nothing wrong with you. You got it on you. I hope you ain't got both of them. I hope you got one. <laughs> now watch this here. God created that. So what, what's the problem? Some of y'all done had sex before. Now, now, uh. All right. So he was on the Word Network last week with Greg Davis. Now, I was just told that I did not know that, but you guys keep me informed while I'm here on the show telling me all different kind of things. Thank you so much for letting me know. I did not know that he was on the Word Network. Now, I'm going to say this. Y'all ain't going to agree with me. But I like Joshua Holmes. <laughs> I like him. When I seen that video, he talking about, and he kept talking about, I don't want you to put you in me. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to give me no. I said, what? <laughs> I started laughing so hard. I was tickled. My tickle box will flip upside down and shaking. I said, he did not say that. And I want, just like I showed it to you twice, I've done about 20 times. And every time I kick my feet and holler. <laughs> well, he's in Atlanta right now. And I was going to give y'all a surprise and have him sitting beside me right here on the show. But let me tell y'all about these niggas. 
these preachers has got niggas in them. And I'm you not about I'm not about to go back and forth, back and forth if you want to come at this time, that time. No, my show is seven o'clock on Mondays. And if you can't get to the studio seven o'clock on Mondays, well then forget it. You call in. So I'm texting him now, telling him call in, call in, call in. But he probably too busy putting sequences on his jacket and on his sleeve and putting purple contacts in instead of the blue ones. But I do want y'all to know that I do like them. But, you know, I'm going to talk about you, good, bad, or indifferent, and jokes on you. But I like them. Let me see what y'all saying. I like them. Let me see. Let me see what y'all saying. <laughs> Somebody said he's got demons. He is bisexual. <laughs> well, y'all always, why y'all always clowning on somebody's sexuality? That's what y'all did. The, the uh, What's that man's name? The, um, uh, uh, the fussy man. Stevenson. That's what y'all did to Stevenson and got him sent, his lawyer sending me a cease and desist. I'm like, you what you ceasing and desisting me for? Because slander, misappropriation, and making, I said, hold on. That was King Jives. That was uh, 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 obnoxious. I was the one that said that I don't think it's fair to question. What's the name? You see I'm talking about somebody else. You got that picture up there? See, you ain't on your game. It don't, ain't, ain't him. Um, you put that up there. And so this, this, and I said, I ain't do that. So y'all need to be getting them because I ain't do that. I'm the one that said you shouldn't be putting no question mark over nobody head because of no picture. I said, that ain't fair that they make a whole story out of their sexuality. Now, I think all of us might think whatever we think about him. But you shouldn't take no picture and then create a whole narrative. Now, I, I wasn't going to do that. Granted, we talked about it. And I have my views on it. But. Anyway, so I, I like this mind. For him to get on that thing and say what he said, the way that he said, and didn't bat an eye, I knew right then I liked him. And the reality is this. I, I have personal dealings with him, and he's cool. All right, so that was the second video that made him viral. But while he was here in Atlanta's, actually before this video, there was another video with him, him making folk fall out. I mean, that got, I know every bit of, it got millions of views. Um, but I ain't put that into this show. But this is what happened while he was here in this revival preaching. Y'all look at this here. That, you know, <laughs> now, am I for what he be doing or agree with what he be doing? I, I'm not going to say that I'm in agreement with how he is doing what he's doing. That doesn't make me right. I'm just telling you what I think and what I would like and, and what I wouldn't like. But anybody who's bold enough to do what he is doing. I'm going to, on some level, like them. Same thing with Stevenson. On some level, I do like Stevenson. I don't know. I don't. And then there's some other stuff I don't like that he got going on. But anybody that can be in their own skin and just put whatever they're doing out there, that takes a level of boldness. And then from just from the, the little back and forth dealing when I deal with him, I can't say I know him. I can't say that. You know, but the back and forth dealings, um, I can't say that he's a bad guy. I mean, he ain't no worse than Karn. That little back and forth dealing I did with Karn, and, 
They ain't no bad guy. I mean, they just do what they do the way they do because they feel like that's what they're supposed to be doing. Okay? We're going to all have our opinions about it. I'm going to have my opinions about it. But it ain't going to mean that I that I hate you. I just think that you might be crazy or you might be... Um, these blue contests, though, I just don't know about this. This here that I can't understand. Why in the whole hell I'm the heaven? Well, you got on blue contests. You was a nigga. You was a nigga. Now the girls can do that. The black women. You can be dark skinned. You can be blurple. Blue and purple, so black. But and wear any color if you're a woman. But men's it's Yeah, color contacts is what we used to wear a long time ago. You know, mm -mm. no. When I see him, and I may see him before he go back to Texas, I'm gonna say you need to take them blue contacts. I, and y'all need to follow me on my regular page because I might go live on my regular page if I if I happen to see him and just ask him a couple questions like I did Bishop Jordan the other night. Um, my page with the blue check. Yeah. All right, let's take some callers. Let me see what you guys got to say about this here. Caller ending in 5244. What's your name and where you're calling from? Hey, Larry. This is Ashley calling from Atlanta. Hey, I'm Ashley. I'm on the phone this time. <laughs> um, unlike you, I don't like uh, this prophet. Um, he, I'm a little sketch about these contacts. And true story it was a young lady that my mom um, would mentor. She would come up to my mom's house every Sunday. She would sit in the church with my mom. Mm -hmm. And after she started following him, she left the church. Mm -hmm. Everything on her page is about Joshua Holmes. Mm -hmm. And um, I reached out to her because she wasn't answering my mom's calls. She blocked me. And... She started not to talk to her mom and stuff like that over mm. him. It's just everything is about him. She's always sending all her money. And I see a lot of young ladies are starting to do this because of him. And I feel like it's kind of cultish. Mm. Um, speaking of those videos, he just, I don't know. It, it's a little too much for me. But, for um, real? Yeah. Y'all better go take yeah. get your mama. Young lady don't, she don't talk. <clears throat> Then y'all better go get y'all mama then. What the world? What, 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 I don't know. What, I don't understand. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this. I do know that when it comes to a lot of these leaders, because they tell me that with Stevenson, people move their whole life to whole new cities, but one of the churches is. So I not understand that, that draw that can be on the spiritual leader. I totally get that. But then to disconnect from your family, or that is that is concerning. That is that is concerning, and I would yeah. like and I would like to be able to ask him. You know, do you know this person that this caller is talking about? Can you speak with her and tell her not to separate herself from her family? You know, I think that as a spiritual leader, that family we should be interested in family, unless it's toxic. Are y'all crazy? Oh no, we're not we're not crazy at oh, okay. all, and I. I'm the one who wrote you on Instagram asking was you gonna come on today, and I I'll write you in your inbox and tell you who church she was attending, and you know you don't know this pastor. He he's real deal. Mm -hmm. So she just left the church. Um, she doesn't talk to my mom or anyone, e even the lady who used to do her hair. She doesn't talk to her anymore. Uh, her mom calls my mom to see if she heard from her because she's not really taking any of her calls. Really? Um, her brother. Yeah, everything on her page, I can give you her page, and like everything on her page is, it goes something about Joshua Holmes. It's, she has just totally committed her life to him. Everywhere she, everywhere he goes, she goes and travels to see him. She sent him countless amounts of money. I just, I don't know. It's just like she just snapped mentally, and she just live and breathe him. She doesn't put anything on her per, uh, page personal about herself. It's just always in relation to Joshua Holmes. So I think he has an issue. I'm, I need to know. I need to know something about I haven't met him in person. We planned to have meet while he was here in Atlanta, and we were going to do the show, and it will be a surprise to you guys to do an interview. But I just know that since he's been here, it's like this, you know, like almost like he a little nervous to come on the show, and I get it. 
you know, because I'm going to ask you straight questions. You, y'all saw that with everybody that ever came on my show, but I'm going to treat you nice. Um, I just want to know. I want to answer the questions that come to my mind and let you guys answer the questions and get answers for the questions you have. Thank you so much for calling in. Hit me my DM and let me know, okay? I sure will. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Caller in at an 8750. What's your name and where you're calling from? Hello. Um, I'm staying uh, anonymous. Okay. Uh, but I am from Miami, Florida. Cool. Um, one minute, right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, one, anybody that follows a man with uh, blue contact eyes is a hot mess, okay? Uh, <laughs> two... Um, in the in the in the church world or in the religion of Christianity or whatnot, um, you don't see Jesus acting like this. You don't see any of his disciples acting like this. He is a prophet. Okay, that last video of him uh, throwing some money. Uh uh-uh. uh. Who, who? Listen, I might as well become a prophet and 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 have them throwing money at me. Dude, I'm broke. Anywho, what you gonna call it? He don't have no uh, Christian standards. He don't have no standards as far as how prophets should act. Prophets don't act like this. Um, he has no uh, uh, standards as far as uh, the walk of a prophet, and he has no standards as um, uh, far as him communi- you know, far as his, his uh, following lead, follow his people behind him. Mm. I, he, he just a whole joke, a whole hot mess. You know, <laughs> a whole joke. As a matter of fact, a whole hot mess in the hole. Did you say a Amen. whole joke and a whole hot mess? That's a yeah, new look one. Look at the red shoes. He look like Dorothy. Look at them! Look at them shoes. <laughs> Darth. And you don't you don't put on no white socks with them shoes. Look at it. It don't make no sense. <laughs> okay. Anywho, he 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 exalts himself too much. Okay. He, you know he I don't think he upholds Christ. You know. Hmm. That's just my opinion. Interesting. Okay. Thank you so very much for calling okay, in. I'm Give I'm us. Honest from Miami, Florida. Bye bye. All right. No problem. All right, we don't have to agree on when it's whatever you think and whatever you feel. Yeah, I like them. I like them. But, but, but let me explain what I mean by that. Anybody that can be bold enough to do what they're doing, even if it is, I mean, cause except for this thing about this woman not having nothing to do with their family and cutting off. Now, that's concerning because I think that brings harm. But really what he doing, he just putting it out there. And whoever draws and attracted to it, that's them. Same thing with Corn, same thing with Matthew. I mean, they just doing what they do. We ain't got to like it. That's why we're not members. <laughs> we ain't got, I mean, we ain't got to agree with it, rather. This is why we, we're not sending our money and stuff. But just for my dealings with him back and forth, he seemed to be all right. I mean, as a person. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I, I mean, it's, it's just through text communication you know he seemed to be okay same thing with corn my experience with corn on the phone different stuff it's all right i mean that's just i mean i don't know why did i buy them now i'm gonna tell y'all this why didn't i buy them my dinners with her cool i mean cool i just said why need why he up there you see what I'm talking about? You, you call it up. My dealings with one in the battle, I got to do it again. My my dealings with one in the battle, cool. Do I like the whole bubble beat, bumblebee thing? Mm-hmm. But the women love it. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not big on it. That old bay seasoning thing they did, that's too much. I can't. The video with the cuss words, blessed my life. Oh, Lord, but she's talking about, oh, shit. oh, Lord, that blessed me so good. <laughs> so, <laughs> ow, I love that. That was hilarious, and I actually love her for that. <laughs> so I'm happy for your studio, Juanita. I'm happy for your new TV show, and you go to Woman Dial Loose, and you preach the word. All right, get back to Joshua. Let's take the calls. Let's go. Caller in and then 6267. What's your name? Where are you calling from? You got one not, one minute. This is Dr. Chris Lord from Brooklyn, New York. What up, uh, Dr. First Chris? First of all, 
Hey, uh, first of all, I just want to say about the um, Michael Turpin story. Could you investigate whether the wife may be gaslighting him? Mm, what's that? That's just that's just a question. Now, I want to say about Joshua Holmes. I like Joshua Holmes. I think he is being real, but I disagree with you that he is similar to Stevenson and Karn. Karn is a sociopath. Stevenson is a closeted, in my opinion, homosexual, and he's and he's hypocritical. Um, and the thing about Joshua Holmes is that he may be eccentric, but from what I've been hearing from this, the small clips you showed, he sounds like he's flowing with the Holy Ghost. And he's part of the Benjamin generation. He's a young guy, and he probably doesn't want to come on your show because he's inexperienced and he doesn't want to be condemned. Not by you, but by the people who listen to the show. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Thank you so very much. No problem. Bye. Okay. I'm out to call him on air right now. Like, why are you? Why ain't you come to my show? Let's see. Let's see if I can get him to answer y'all. You know I'm all time doing something, man. Let me see. Let's see if he gonna answer the phone. He's not going to answer this phone. <laughs> He's not going to answer this phone. Especially he see my number coming up. He know I go live on Monday nights. Somebody said, Reed, how does Chris get through every week? I don't know. She called in. I don't know. They, the lines is clogged too. Unless she got something that she do to the line. I don't know. But she get right on through there. I did hear that one in the bottom was married again, but I don't know. I hope she ain't. This, this, that'd be the repeat of the same thing before. Like when she, um, things were blowing up for her, then she got married and got stumped in the center of her wheel. This, she don't need to do that. All right, let's go. Caller ended in forty three seventy two. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, this is your cousin Tony calling you from North Carolina. What's up, Tony? To know, <laughs> what's up with you? I want to know. I want to know why. Okay, you know, I know everybody has their different ministries, different things that they do, and I'm all for everybody being having variety in their ministry. But what I'm wondering is why are you on stage dancing and people are throwing money at you? It looks like you're stressing. <laughs> I'm just saying. It looks like you're stressing. And that's where my problem comes in at. Not that you're preaching, not that you're dancing, not that people want to sew into your ministry, but the fact that they're throwing the money with light flashing while you're wearing red shoes and a white suit makes it look like you're stripping. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you look stripperish. You look a little, little what? Um, stripperish. Stripperish. Like a little harlot. That's all I'm saying. You look a little harlot. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying it ain't right. I'm just saying why. Uh, Okay. So oh, I feel so many take you hate too, but I just want to know. Okay. I just want to know. Maybe somebody can clarify that this is something they do in their church that they throw money while the preacher shout, and it makes it look strippers. It looks like Holy Ghost stripping. That's what it looks like. I, I, I don't even know what That's to what tell it you. Looks, it looks I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, man. I just thought I was calling in the ass. <laughs> uh, thank you for calling in. You too. Now, now listen, I, what I don't understand, but you know they throw money while they be preaching, don't they? They throw money while they be preaching. Both of them performances. Let's keep going through things, see what the folks saying. <clears throat> Caller in and then 6227, what's your name and where you're calling from? You got one minute. <laughs> That now you know that foolishness that he's up there doing. <laughs> now you know you're a pastor with the Holy Ghost. I don't care about you liking him, but you know that's foolishness and eccentric and all that nonsense. Stop it, preach them. And when they go up there and lay money on the steps, when they they when the pastor preach a word there, some churches do they lay money. They don't throw it at them. They lay it on the steps. 
and he don't be up there dead. He be preaching. So they use that scripture, buy the truth and sell it now. Now, all he need on is a G-string. Uh. Oh, you know that reach. <laughs> That's foolish. <laughs> oh, my God, you tickling me. What part of North Carolina are you calling from? Oh, she done hung good. She was through with it. You know that's foolishness. All right, let's go. Caller in and then 8288. What's your name? Where you calling from? You got one minute. Hey, I love your show. This is Restina from the Bay Area in California. Hey there. I just started watching like a month ago, and I just love it. Ah, uh, thank you. So my concern is the level of mental illness um, that is probably going on in the community that he is taking care of. Hmm. And um, it's we, we live in a disparaging time where Trump is in office and people look for anything to believe in. So you could stand on the side of the road and, and say anything uplifting and just seems like folks just running and writing checks. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. Um, and I don't know what to say about it. I feel bad for, for his members and I'm praying for his members. God bless them. And I just pray that they get some help and they are able to find someone who really loves them for who they are. And that's all I got to say. Mm, okay, I hear that. So you you saying that you see that a lot of uh, people that are struggling with mental illness, they sort of connect with him? Not necessarily connect with him, but connect with people who have a message. Everybody wants to hear something good. And so uh, uh, when folks are prophesying and, you know, God's going to bless you, God's going to do this, God's going to do that, of course everybody wants to hear it. And a lot of people just don't live in a reality of where, where we are in our lives. And they just can't live as is. And so they need to go and hear a word. And if it comes in that package, so be it. God bless them. But good Lord, it's sad. It's just sad to see. Mm. I hope they find some people that, that take money, put it into communities, take the money, feed the homeless, and not throwing it at somebody with some red shoes. That's a shame. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I got you. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. Something that just happened in the, in my inbox exchange. Hold on. Let me let me figure this out now. Wait. Give me a few minutes. A, a little piece of a minute now, cause this ain't adding up. Mm hmm. I see what the problem is. Mm -mm -mm. Let me tell you something now. Let me try this other number of Joshua's. And that, that went straight to voicemail. See, so let me tell you something about the power of social media. Most preachers, and I guess businessmen, have about four, five, six lines. And depending on who you are depends on what line you get. And as I'm sitting here, I'm getting other phone numbers for the same person. <laughs> so I'm calling all the phone lines. To find out why in the world you have disadvantaged pen and won't come on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me information. I see. I, I, yeah. Oh, that. Now I can't put that on the show. I can't. That's that picture was for you. That won't for me. All right. Let's go take some more phone calls. <clears throat> Call it in and in fifty one hundred. What's your name and where you're calling from? Good evening, Doctor Reed. This hey. is Sky from Houston. Hey, Sky, I like your name. I'm sorry, Hammer. Thank you. Mm. All right. <clears throat> where is Prophet Holmes' father? Oh, I don't I know. I feel like we're dealing with some fatherlessness up and through here. I don't okay? know. My second question is, if there was no social media, where would some of these young guys be? 
in real life. Yeah. Okay. I am a church girl. I've been in church all my life for 37 years. And to be very honest with you, I'm really at a point to where I'm over it. Mm. I'm over it. I This cat, I've been following him. Well, not following him like that, but like mm -hmm. he caught my attention because he has um, one scope on Periscope where he was cussing like a sailor, which if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But his character is very reflective, mm -hmm. especially if the young woman, his wife or whoever that was, who was, you know, showing out or whatever she, you know, what she was doing. That's very reflective. Very, hmm. because if she really respected him, because if he was integral and had character behind the scenes, mm -hmm. she wouldn't have cut a fool like that in public. Mm -hmm. People cut a fool like that in public because they need to be heard, hmm. because they want to expose the real. And I tell you what, I've seen enough prophets, pastors, and leaders, and I'm not calling in to expose anyone, but I've seen enough of a lack of character and integrity behind mm -hmm. the scenes to mm -hmm. make me feel sorry or sad rather for I think that was his wife whoever that woman was okay. so I'm not impressed by blue eyes not at all mm -hmm. and then I'm still laughing and I know my minute is up I'm still laughing at the lady remember when you did the um, the Matthew Stevenson mm -hmm. um, story you talking about Ruthie and she was like she was like, I wouldn't give Matthew Stevenson 59 cents. I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got to say about that. Thank you. Okay, and, and I do hear the sentiments of your heart. I do know some of it is disheartening with some of the stuff that we see um, from a lot of these leaders. I, I do understand that and how that can feel. Like, look at how he treated you. Look at how he acting. He, he didn't gave you about 15 numbers for what? <laughs> Why? What do you have to hide, sir? Come on the show. Well, Talk to us. I, my, my daughter in the background call him. <laughs> yeah, but this the first this the yeah. first this the first time I've ever reached out to him and it's not immediate. And it's not, you know, within five or ten minutes. So I can't say, you know, I've and I know he travels overseas and stuff a lot, but I've never had a problem with contacting him at all. So um I'm thinking Yeah, you but has he been on your show yet? No, he hasn't. But I think I this know. the that's the but first he, he set up with um with Dr. Murdoch and them. Yeah, and he did with Greg Davis last week is what somebody told me. So I probably gonna um mm, mm. like there's some things I can't say, but let me say this. Y'all gonna be really surprised mm -hmm. at something that's going to be happening that I found out this weekend that was set up as and y'all probably about to get the shock of your life if this goes through. Um mm. just say let me say this. I can't say too much, but you're going to get an opportunity to see me confront some things that we've seen on the show live and on air really soon yeah. as it relates okay. to preachers, particularly mm -hmm. prophets. And that's all I'm going to say. That's a little teaser. That's a little Thank teaser. That's a little teaser. All right. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Take some more. These callers is, is great tonight. Call it in at 2389. What's your name and where you're calling from? Hi, Reed. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, okay, Reed. I'm, I'm just really just, I'm calling from D.C., first of all. I'm just so upset nowadays with all of these prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, <laughs> who are just running amok in the church. You know, a lot of people are hurting and really seeking God in this day and time. And we have these people just making a mockery of the church and fooling people. Some of this stuff is just, you know, it's just blatant foolishness in our eyes. And we know it. Some of us have been brought up in church and we know it. You know, old time gospel, let not your good be evil spoken of. You know, it, it contradicts and it casts out a lot of this foolishness that we're seeing. Mm. I, I, I just can't see, you know, yes, it's fine to laugh at, and you know you have a few jokes, but come on, let's be for real. A lot of people are led astray, like a young lady who, you know, 
abandon a family or whatever. You know, mm. it, it, it's hurtful. It's mm. really hurtful. And as a mental health professional here in Washington, D.C., I counsel so many people day in, day out, day in, day out, who've been hurt, led astray, mis, mis, um, informed by people in church, by leaders in church, Yikes. out for the money and not really caring about the soul. Yeah, you know, somebody said something to me um, earlier today, and they said that they that the reason why I did that they think that a reason the reason why I done this last show on E. Dewey Smith was for money. In fact, they said that E. Dewey Smith said, this is a legend, that I'm doing what I'm doing for money. They also said, this is a legend, that Matthew Stevenson said that the reason that any, that, first of all, called me a tabloid, which is just totally stupid because that's, that's writing. And then say, this is a, this is a legend. And say that anybody who deals with tabloids, they're idiots. This is like an entire industry now. That lets me know that you think so much in the four walls of the church, you ain't got good sense outside of it. When you talk about an entire in industry, entire industry, you know. And so, and it's very interesting to me because what I do on my show, of course, I'm gonna throw jokes at you. I'm gonna talk about whatever yeah. you got going on, but ultimately. I'm not going to be malicious towards you, but the response towards me is typically malicious for one reason. And let me tell you why. And this is the reason why they're going to talk about y'all because y'all watching, you sharing and everything. Because we have an opinion. That's it. It's, it's, it's like the church people can't take no opinion. Either you are darn green or you the devil. No, I'm a critical thinker and I don't agree with all the stuff y'all got going on. Thank you. Thank you. We're saying the same thing. Yeah. And We're I'm and I'm the, the kind of person. Thing. And I'm kind of person. You don't I don't you don't have to agree with me either. I'm gonna give you the same grace and the same respect that I want back. I don't agree with what you got going on. You ain't gotta agree with what I got going on. I got an opinion about what you got going on. You can have an opinion what I've got going on. But at least make sure Make sure you don't you don't you don't try to name me and and put me in something that that I ain't, you know, and I ain't malicious right. towards nobody. I'm just thinking of me, right. and I don't do and this. I, I, do, hmm? I love your show. I enjoy watching your show, and I try to tune in faithfully every Monday. I've Thank called you. in many times before. Um, I've contributed to your show. I I really thank God that someone like you is you're bringing to the forefront. What so many people have been saying for years, I don't fool with church because those people are fake. <laughs> and you're, you're just shining light on the truth that mm -hmm. keeps a lot of people from, you know, it makes it so hard for those with true and, and concerning and discerning hearts to really reach out to the mm -hmm. masses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the reality is I ain't saying all church people fake. But there are some fake church folk. Let's just call a spade a spade. Yes, they're right. Thank you so much for calling in. And the real, yes, the reality, you. yeah. And the reality is, you know, because somebody tell me my mo my there's nothing I've ever done in my entire life that was motivated by money, by fame, or any of those things. I've had people that work for me, with me or mentor me to give me advice that was money based. But I have never done anything for money. And I don't do this show for money. Does it make money? Heck yeah. So that's why I'm gonna keep I ain't studying y'all to mind. I'm gonna keep on doing the show. Go on top of doing good and helping folks. I'm making some money. But it ain't about the money. Huh? All right, let's call on. Call it in and then 2300. What's your name? Where you calling from? You got one minute. Hi, Dr. Larry. This is Sharon calling from San Antonio, Texas. How are you? I'm doing well. Well, I'm calling on behalf of on Joshua Holmes. Okay. You know, one in my opinion, I first I started following Joshua Holmes because he's a from Texas. Okay. So I gave him some time. Now when we get past some of the videos that you've shown, when you get past that, there's one quality that this young man has. He knows the Bible. 
He knows that word. This guy's had me with a pen and paper taking notes when he talks about witchcraft, Jezebel. I mean, when he's really being serious, Mm -hmm. I mean, he really has, he knows the word. Mm -hmm. So I continue to follow Joshua for quite a while, but what got me off of Joshua is when he gets a little immature, I mean, uh, when he's laying hands on folks or blowing on them and they're falling down and they don't fall, he keeps at it and throwing everything but the towel at them. You know, that gets a little, that gets a little too much, you know, and at my age. But I'm serious. I mean, Mike Murdoch loves him. I mean, when he, he's got very eccentric, but when he, and his mother and father, does, they, they're around. But this young man is very, he's gifted to me, in my opinion. He's gifted. And I'm telling you, I would have my notebook and pen. When he's into the word, I mean, without all the gl- glitter and gold, yeah. that boy, can, he can put it down. He really can. Well, let me tell you what I appreciate about your call. And, and this is great. And I love when it's like we get all different types of opinion because mm-hmm. we need we need to hear that. I mean, that he is very skillful with the word. Now, I do know from mm-hmm. dealing with him through text because sometimes our talk conversation is totally about prayer or totally about prophecy, mm-hmm. or just something in business and just shooting, shooting the breeze concerning the business. So this is the reason why I said, you know, that I like him. I don't, like, you are able to say, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with that that they do, but I like this, that, and the other. So I think it's a dope that, that, you know, that you can like somebody at the same time, not necessarily agree or sign off on everything that they do. And I think if a lot of more, exactly. if, if more people were like that, the world would be a lot better. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. I am so glad I was able to get in touch with you tonight. I love your show. I can't wait for your bigger platform. And I, I'm tuning in on Mondays. And you are so gifted and talented. You have me laughing so much. <laughs> but I learn a lot from your show. I Th- love your thank show. Thank you. Thank You're you so much for calling in. Job. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Uh huh. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> somebody saying the devil know the word too ah, somebody say he mishandled scripture well all these opinions you know I love this I like I like the yin and the yang alright next caller caller in and in 0531 what's your name where you calling from hey what's going on man this is Jay Taylor how are you what's up all is well man hey um I don't really I'm not I'm not crazy about the dude, but I really have a problem with something that you said. Okay. Like, cause, because you said that dark skinned people can wear green contacts, and I, I take that offensive. What? Like, like I see I see I see dark skinned people all the time, and I see a couple of them with green contacts, and to me they look like when you cut on the Xbox. <laughs> we want to make sure we stand clear of that. That's all. That's that's all I got. Uh, I try to put that out there. All right, man. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm you. You're, you're a clown. That's funny. That is funny. <laughs> all right, man. All right. It's a little like an Xbox. You know, Xbox. Come on, it's right dark and that green light. Come on. Okay, call it in in the fifty eight forty three. What's your name? Where you calling from? Caller, caller entering 5843. What's your name and where you're calling from? You're live on Larry Reed Live. Where are you at? Hello? Oh, baby, we're here. We've been waiting for a whole hour. What's your name? Where you calling from? My name is Yolanda, and I'm calling from Washington, D.C. What up? And I, I do love your show. I love And you I think too. the reason why a lot of pastors are upset at you is because you're exposing them. But you're exposing something, though, on your show that I just love, is that people just don't know the Word. Mm -hmm. They don't spend any time in the Word. They don't spend any time with God. Mm -hmm. And I do believe if people spend a lot of time, a lot of these crazy things that pastors are doing, Mm -hmm. people would be more discerning Mm -hmm. and not go to their churches and, 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 and and be listening to them. Mm. You know, people need to be discerning. Yeah, they need to be in God's word every day. You say your name was Yolanda or Latoya. Yolanda. 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 Yolanda.
Linda. Okay, I, I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But let me say this. You know, I don't really want, well, I don't really think about it, is uh, whether these people should leave these pastors' churches or not. I don't really never think about that, but it very well could be the reason, the thing that they need to do. I just really want to talk about and create conversation or expose um, what is already protruding that we are totally ignoring. I have done no story on my show that was not already exposed in public. It's just that I didn't, there was no conversation created around it, you know? And so um, that's my mission to expose a, a, a seeping sore, a running sore. My initial sermon was healing for running sores, you know, over 20 some my years ago. You know, and so I, mm-hmm. I think that, that that I know that's what I'm supposed to do with this platform. Um, so I don't, I can't say that I really want people to leave churches, but folk leave churches as a result, and it was a bad church and a toxic church. Then thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> thank you so much, Yolanda, for calling in, and my show love you right back. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Call it. In- what the devil wrong with you? Call it in in the 87, 6 to 8. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, Larry. Hey there. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just want to I just want to let you know you got a good show. And I'll be laughing at how you be fussing at the um, cameraman <laughs> is behind the <laughs> Boy, you give that boy hell. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you and your um and your TV show. I just called to see, um tell you that. Thank you so much for telling me that. Thanks so much. Right. <laughs> Call it in and in fifty one hundred. What's your name and where you calling from? Doctor Reed in the sky again. I had to call back in because I meant to mention this, but you only get one minute, right? Okay. So <clears throat> everybody is talking about as far as pastors like. We're human, we're human, we're human. Mm-hmm. But where is the standard? Okay. Like, how long is, is if human is okay, then I can go be a, a pastor and do whatever I want to do. Or <laughs> did we count the cost before we accepted the calling? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. I hope I'm not too far off the topic. No, you ain't. But I know. You ain't. Okay. I know we have been talking about uh, fatherlessness previously. Yeah. And um, in this case, uh, we're talking about uh, Prophet Holmes. Who, mm-hmm. uh, that's your friend. I get it, but mm. friend is too big of a word. <laughs> I just I, friend is oh, too big. Your acquaintance. And I don't use friend hardly <laughs> ever. Associate, whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but um, so I get it, and you know, he can have these. Not I'm not just referring to the clip that you showed, mm-hmm. but like I stated before, that was one before that, like way before that when he first started. I'm assuming he first started coming on social media when I saw this, this particular one, where it was really bad. It was severely vulgar, and he wasn't talking about the word. Oh, cool. So my thing is, at the end of the day, you know. We we know standards. We don't have any standards anymore. Okay. So it's a free for all. We can everybody can do whatever they want to do. Okay. That's well, let, but let me speak to that because I am the one yes, that's sir. on the show that always talking about human, human, humanity. What I mean by that is is because this a lot of things we demonize need to be humanized. If I am a single man and I end up going to get me some pom pom. Do not demonize that. That is my natural humanity that wants pum pum. God gave me a pain that I can use it to put it in the center of ladies' wheels. That's why God yes, gave, gave me that. You know, now when it comes to my when it comes to something that isn't managed and something that is not brought, you know, in discipline, I think a lot of times we automatically says the demon but it can just be our human uh-huh. side that has not been disciplined that we're you know that we haven't you know got up under you know some kind of management so that's why i always scream mm-hmm. the humanity thing now the fatherless thing these men that are married that are sleeping with other women and having babies 
basically what I'm saying when I'm saying that they're human, I'm saying I understand that you have not grown for one reason or the other in your spirituality or in your soul work to the space to where you're able to commit your peen mm -hmm. and your pebbles mm -hmm. to one vagina. Now, but that's what mm -hmm. I mean when I say humanity. I'm not, in no ways am I saying that adultery is proper or adultery and and or living right or living holy is like we've outgrown that. That's old school teacher. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make things less mystical or spiritual or mm -hmm. religious and have a, a regular conversation so that we can just get more sober. Because I think sometimes we're defining real world issues with our mm -hmm. religion or what, what our pastor teaches mm -hmm. in, the, in the four walls of church or what was passed down to us or our Bibles. And the reality is you cannot take your biblications and then throw it mm -hmm. on the whole world and everybody to fit with your personal beliefs that you pull from the biblications. I don't think right. that that works toward the common goal of spreading Jesus to all the whole wide world. That's what I think, but that's mm -hmm. just my opinion. But I, I, but trust me, I believe what you believe. I believe mm -hmm. that we're supposed to be holy. And when I say holy, I'm not talking about a list of, of rules that things right. you cannot do. I am literally talking about the right. things that you are supposed to do to let your personal light, your gift, and who God is in you shine in the world. So holiness is, is a light that you're supposed to reflect into the world. That's what I'm saying. That's me. Well, amen. You're right. And and I agree with you totally. And and all I'm saying is that because you're not the only one saying that, and I understand where I understand why you're saying that because of the seat that you sit in, and and you know mm -hmm. that could very well be your personal beliefs. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. I you got that right. But, say that. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Because if, if I, you, you're right, That's, you're exactly right. Okay, let's go. Okay, they're saying we're taking too long, but you just be talking to me, okay, Scott. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Scott, okay, what it is you like me? Girl, let's hit me in my inbox. You like me. You done called in twice. What's up? Just hit me up. Hit me. What, what's up? Hit me up. <laughs> Bye, Dr. Reed. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't called twice for nothing. I already know what's up. All right. <laughs> 1867, what's your name and where you're calling from? This is Christopher Knight from Oklahoma City, Prophet Christopher. What's up, Prophet Christopher? Man, I'm living this life, enjoying it, man. I'm really enjoying your show, and I enjoy your ministry. Uh, I, I enjoy you on so many levels, man of God, and I'm looking forward to meeting you one day. Uh, but I happen to be in the Midwest. I'm in Oklahoma City. I stay in Dallas also. Hmm. But I was calling tonight because... Um, uh, as you say, is this what the world needs now? Is this the church that we're presenting right now? Or are we in transition? Do we really know where we're at as the body of Christ? And you as an apostle and a messenger, uh, uh, where are we exactly in all of this? I think the world needs to know that. And I, and I just thought I'd, okay. I'd push that out there real quick. Is that where are we right now? Are we in a on a strong level of transition as fivefold ministry gifts, men and women of God? Are we learning to be honest about where we're at, what our emotions? Should we have more emotional integrity concerning the things that we're dealing with right now? Mm, interesting. Okay, well, you asked me a question. Well, this is what I think, and this this is Larry Reed, and this is my opinion. I saw somebody put in there talking about if your beliefs do not line up with the Bible, we have a problem. I respect that 100%. I want you to know that the Biblications, God, Jesus, is the source of my beliefs. Now, I will say this, that I am understanding that we are in an expansion when it comes to the church. It's particularly, you said, the fivefold ministry. All those gifts are supposed to be expanded, particularly the office of the apostle and the prophet. Outside the four walls of the church, those offices do not look like they do inside the darn church. Outside the church, in anywhere that the voice of the people or the voice of a deity, a God or a faith can be uh, vocalized, 
you're looking at the office of the prophet. So you find that in a filmmaker, you find that in an actor, you find that in an artist, you find that in a therapist, you find that in somebody who's in broadcasting, radio, someone who is in TV, in digital TV, in broadcasting. That is the office in the prof of the prophet in the marketplace. I'm working on a book called The Marketplace Anointed. I'm going to teach all y'all that because y'all don't get it. I ain't talking about you, Carlo. But anyway, and so then the, then the office of the apostle in the marketplace. So you are dealing with people who actually, who, that's also the filmmaker. It's called the filmmaker not only um, it vocalizes an intent of a deity, of a people or someone's story, but a lot of times they make and create these things. And the um, apostle is a builder. So there's people who build these Fortune 500 companies, the people who build these schools and build these hospitals, you know, build these firms you know we don't understand the fivefold outside of church and what the church is supposed to be doing the church is supposed to be taking people from the community that come in there make sure they connect with god connect with themselves and connect with the reason that they were born then go into the world and be the light of jesus christ in all these different industries but that's the part that the churches a lot of times forget to tell folk they get they let them come in there, heard them in the church, keep them there for 20, 30, 40, 5 years to work a nine to five or do something on the outside. But here at Russia, come back, make sure you don't miss church anniversary and pastor anniversary and, and choir anniversary and make sure you're at church every Sunday because that's how you stay saved. No, it ain't. You might not ever get, get go to church again the way you have for the first 20 years of your life because your assignment called you to another country and they're doing a whole other thing or to somebody's set or to somebody's hospital working all the time. There are many different ways to be a minister of Jesus Christ. It ain't just in the four walls of the church. So, yes, caller, you are right. We are in a transition. And depending on what platform and what people and what assignment you own determines what language you're going to use in order to talk God or Jesus to people. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to take a moment to preach. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome, man. I'm going to stay in contact with you the best I can. I have some other questions about the music industry. Okay. But I won't take up any more time tonight. We'll do that later. So uh, God bless you. Okay. And, and ain't we'll none of that free. You. What you just got just then was free. Anything else you want, you're going to pay me. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ow! Just so you know, <laughs> lifeguideforyou.com. In fact, if y'all need me, play that video. Ain't it up there? Life God in there somewhere? It ain't in there? Life God ain't in there? Life, that's it is right there. It is right there. You can't see right there. That's where it's at. Play the video and I'll come right back. Take some more calls. Bye. Life Guide. This service provides divine direction and insight for your life and future. Larry D. Reed specializes in spiritual guidance through readings, counsel, and dream interpretation. As he communicates with people, within minutes, Larry D. Reed begins to engage the spirit world seeing and hearing things on their behalf that are vital, pertinent and necessary for the success of their destiny. Having served thousands of people from all walks of life for over 20 years, Larry D. Reed has been and is the Life Guide. Book your appointment today. All right, I'm back. So that was the advertisement for those of you that need some counsel, need some advice or dream interpretation. And it says prophetic sight readings, but basically that's personal prophecy. Because I know I ain't just talking to church people, so I had to use some language where you can understand what. And I've been doing that for over 20 years. All right, let's get back to the call. Let's see. Call it in it. Hit the button. Hit the button. Call it in it in 9727. What's your name? Where you're calling from? Hi, Reed. This is Jeremy. I'm calling from Arkansas. Okay, what's up, man? Yeah. You know, I listened to the last caller. I disagree. I don't believe the church is in a transition. Okay. I think it's dying. Ooh. And the main reason why I say that is, who are these people talking to? Because like with Todd Hall, if that voice can tell you that the third person in the back is <clears throat> about to be rich, mm. but it can't tell you to take care of your kids, something's not right. Okay. And with that dude, uh, Matthew Stevenson, <clears throat> he brought up that one of the videos that there's three men in here on Jack or something like that, mm -hmm. but that same voice can't tell you about your character. 
I believe the church is dying, as it should. And okay. <clears throat> Joshua Holmes, they are the prophets of the death because it's supposed to die. At the end of the day, they're not talking to God. I don't know who they're talking to, but it's an evil energy. Hmm. Maybe, maybe we agree because what, tra- what transition is, transition always involves death. So maybe we see in the death mm-hmm. of what was and the rebirth of what the true body of Christ is. Maybe it's in the world or in the marketplace or among the people. And it isn't so much an institution that is created, you know, in the earth to be some kind of monument or, or, or museum. Um, maybe, maybe we're saying the same thing, but I like what you're saying. I resonate with what you're saying about it is dying. I say, let the church say change mm-hmm. as opposed to amen. And the one, where my book at so I can hold it up? You're going to put my book up over there. Um, let the church say <laughs> um, change as opposed to amen. Mark Sharona for that, but I'm holding up to the camera now, Carla. You can't see that. But yeah, so I would have to agree with that because uh, change and rebirth and transition, death is a part. But I mean, I just want to say this. I don't want to take too much time, but I think there's a serious... Like with Juanita Bynum, I love her and I watched her a long time, but when you really listen to her messages, she's echoing the same stuff that Bishop uh, Duncan Williams said, that they were controlled by a voice, that they didn't really have a choice, and it tells them to do weird stuff. Like, I feel like there's an evil energy that no one talks about, and people hide behind, that's really running the church. And I, I mean, what you're saying is right, but I think that these people need help. At the end of the day, hmm. interesting and they won't concept. Because they got so much money. Interesting. Thank you so much for contributing to the conversation, man. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take one or two more calls. I'm gonna be done. <clears throat> Caller in and in fifty one seventy nine. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, Reed. This is Rita from Houston. What up? Read every time I get your live notification, I say, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and when I saw this one tonight, <laughs> I said, I got to call me. I love the show. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some things, like you said, you know, uh, the church is supposed to be the light. Mm-hmm. But these false prophets, it, they just bring in darkness, you know, to the church, mm-hmm. to God's name. And it's a disgrace. I mean, we like to discuss but some of these people don't need no attention, Larry. They don't need okay. no darn attention. <laughs> and this discount beauty supply wearing contact black men oh, again, he really don't need no more attention on this darn show. <laughs> and that's all I got to say. Now, bye, Larry. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Good God about it. Boy, that's a quick read. Okay. All right. Call her in and in. Oh, it's not? Okay. This is going to be my last call for the night. Before I take this last call, text GIVE to 404-800-4530. Help me get this. I want to do I want to do the one either. <laughs> I want to do the one either because I done built my studio and got my stuff together. Call it in and then 2956. What's your name and where you calling from? Hey, this is Keeler from Arkansas. I enjoy your show. I appreciate it because you do expose some things that there needs to be a conversation around. Thank you. One thing that I want to say is that there are, it seems like there's like this Wizard of Oz situation going on where (laughs) these people are following these leaders that have issues. And, you know, in the Wizard of Oz, they wanted to go to the Oz for him to solve their problem, to give them what it is that they didn't have when they had it within them all along, uh, the things that they needed. (laughs) <laughs> and once the, the the Toto pulled the curtain back and showed them what was really going on with the wind, wow. they was just disheartened. Wow. And so this is like what is going on with what I see in some of these churches and these new preachers that's coming up. Things are being exposed so that people will wake up and begin to seek God for themselves and have your own spiritual relationship is in you already. Mm-hmm. And you can't be looking to them to, for your heart and for courage and, and what it is that you're mm-hmm. missing. Learn to have that one-on-one relationship because if you don't, you're going to continually be disappointed and taking advantage of the whiz had them doing some stupid things at first until he was exposed. And then they finally saw that they had it within them. And so church people wake up. 
Maybe all this is happening so that we can wake up, come from mm. up under the influence of that that thing that's going on to make you think that you got to continue to deal with this and, and accept it, and this is the only way to have spirituality. Mm. That's, all, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Girl, you done sat here and ended the show. You ended the show per- perfection. Thank you so much for calling in. And you guys, that's the wrap. Thank you so much for hanging with me on tonight. I'll chat to you later. I always will. And I, I, I will always love you. Bye. Everybody dance around loud as you can't stop hard, put your feet on the floor. Ain't nobody fly like you, lift it up, turn around.